Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at these Bouge RV solar panel crab mounts. Now, if you find this video helpful and you want to purchase some of these, I'll put a link to them in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost you anything extra. So these are clamps that allow you to mount a solar panel to the roof rails of a car. So I'm going to be testing these out on my 2000 Toyota Land Cruiser. I am also going to consider what it would take to install these on my Subaru Outback. So let's get these open. So here we have the instructions, two hex keys and two self-tapping screws. These are the crab mounts, there's four of them, and these are the solar panel brackets. Let's take a look at the instructions. So here we have the kit contents. Step one says, before installation, it is necessary to measure the center distance of your crossbar on your vehicle. So I mentioned I'm going to install these on my Land Cruiser. I'm also going to look at what it would take to install them on my Subaru Outback. My Land Cruiser has adjustable bars, so I can easily move them back and forth, whereas the Outback has fixed bars. So here it says, make sure the distance between the two holes in the solar panel is the same distance from the crossbars. If there's no pre-mounted holes, then drill them with tool three and four. So it looks like they're saying to drill the holes with the self-tapping screws. I would just use a drill and I will talk about some things when doing that. Then it says use tool two and four to install the four brackets as shown in the diagram. So the brackets will mount on the side of the solar panel. So the different parts will sandwich the solar panel. So I'll take a look at that. Then it says use tool one and five to install the crab mounting hardware is shown in the diagram. It says the bolts only need to be attached, do not tighten. So those will install on the roof rails and then you will tighten those and they will clamp down. So there are many options for mounting solar panels to a roof rack. I like these because I can potentially switch them between my vehicles. So we have a hex key here. I'll loosen this and you can see it opens up the clamp. And if I tighten it, it closes the clamp. So the bracket uses this hex key. So this can be mounted in multiple orientations. We can have the solar panel sit up high, or we can have the solar panel recessed. So this screw will have to come out. So this screw controls the clamp and it also attaches this. So let's pull this out all the way. So if we're mounting these up high, we mount it like that. If we want it low, we'll mount it like that. So it's very versatile. So I'll thread that back in. And we'll start tightening that down. So it looks like that. Now it looks like these have a little bit of a lock washer in there to help keeping it from being unscrewed. But I would most definitely carry this in your vehicle you're using this with. Probably wouldn't hurt to put a label on it so you know what it is. That way if it loosens up while you're driving, you can repair it. So I'm going to get a solar panel up here so we can test mounting these. So this is a Renogy 100 watt solar panel. Model number is RNG-100D-SS. So the bracket will go on something like this, and this would be for the recessed mount, which is what I'm going to try to do unless it won't work on the car. So I'll take this off here. Since I can adjust my crossbars, I should be able to mount these wherever I want. So I'm going to put this under here and this over, and that just almost doesn't fit. Let me see if this is gonna work. This is very close. It's hard to see on here, but this bolt is right up against this edge. I don't quite think that's going to work, as is. I really almost just need to file this down a tiny, tiny bit. Let's see if it fits in this orientation, probably not. Almost. So if you have to drill these and you're using a drill, you can drill it just like this and plunge that drill bit in there, but there's a good chance you're gonna hit your solar panel. So you definitely would want to back it up with something like a piece of wood. So when you punch through the aluminum, that wood can take the shock of the drill bit and you can pull it out before you do damage. I kind of stuck that in an angle and it's kind of working. So let's just try it like this. Okay, so it kind of squeezed through that padding. I don't need the padding on this side. So I'm just going to try and pull it off. Yeah, that came off pretty easy. I really only need the padding up against the solar panel. This almost seems like it could use a washer in here also, but let's tighten it down. Now I'm going to keep that pad in case I do end up needing to do the raised mount on this. So that's very secure on there now. So when I mount to the other side, I want to have the exact same distance from the edge and something like a carpenter square is a good tool to measure that. So I can loosen this up here. I'll butt it up against the side when I'm just shy of seven inches there. I'll tighten that down. Then I'll place this on the other side when I place the bracket there because you want these to be perfectly in line with each other so they're straight when they're on your cross rails. So on the car, this will be like this. 
and this will clamp down on the rail. So I'm going to get the four brackets mounted up, we'll head up to my Land Cruiser, and we'll get this attached. Okay, so I have the brackets installed here on the solar panel. So next I want to measure the distance between the bolts on the brackets, and I want to measure that pretty precisely. So I got 27 inches there, so now I want to go and adjust my crossbars so the centers of them are at 27 inches. Okay, so here I'm at my crossbars. I'll turn these to adjust these. Now I have plenty of room up here, but you'd potentially want to make sure you're not going to run into your hatch or a moonroof. Okay, so I have the crossbars at 27 inches. Now I didn't move the rear crossbar, I moved the front one, and it is still loose. So I'm going to clamp down the rear clamp, then I'll clamp down the front clamp, and that will align the bar, and then I'll tighten the roof rail. Before I do that, I want to make sure the wires can come out the back. Now as far as positioning this side to side, I'm going to put it more towards my driver's side. So I'm going to measure this distance at the front and rear and make sure it's the same so it's parallel to the edge of the car. I said I was going to measure this, but I just pulled it all the way to the edge. So now I can tighten it down. Okay, that seems nice and tight. That looks good. I'm going to do that on the other side in the rear over here. Now when I tighten these down, I'm going to visually make sure the clamp is centered with this, and this is still loose so I can adjust it back and forth just a little bit, and that should minimize any binding. Okay, so I have the panel fully installed. I have the wires coming out the back here. There's a little loop here. I can take a Velcro tie and put the wires here to keep them from flopping around. I could even go around the whole rail if I didn't have this. So now I'm going to go grab one of my portable power stations and we'll connect up to this. So I'm going to be connecting this up to my Green Pulse portable power station. And this was provided to me by Green Pulse for a previous video, but they have no affiliation with this video. And to hook it up, I'm going to be using this cable that has MC4 connectors on one end and XT60 connector on the other. And this cable is from the Green Pulse solar panel that was also provided to me by Green Pulse. So I do have this power station and a Green Pulse solar panel and they actually work very well. Now you may wonder, since I have the Green Pulse solar panel, why I'm not using it? Well, it's a folding solar panel and it's a nice solar panel, but it's not ideal for mounting on a car. So if you're at a campsite, the Green Pulse solar panel would be good because you can set it up and aim it at the sun and really optimize your charging. The point of this solar panel is I can use it to charge my power station and maybe run some things while I'm driving in the car or while the car's parked. Whereas the folding solar panel could be set up if I was say at a campsite. Now I could potentially use the two together, but that's a little bit more of an advanced setup. So I'm going to connect these two MC4 connectors up to the solar panel. So those will slide together like so. Now to get power inside, I'm going to run the cable through this gasket here. Now if it's going to be dry, I could be doing it up here, but that could let water in. If I know it's going to rain, I might be better off running it down here and putting a drip loop in and running it back up through here. So as I'm putting it here, I could put some masking tape on here to hold it in place. So that's not a good long-term solution, but if you're going on weekend camping trips, you could mount the solar panel on the roof and tape this up, and when you're done with the weekend, remove that tape. So what I want to do here is make it so this does not get pinched when I close the gate. So you want to look for clearances. Now, if you look at your specific vehicle, it may have a bigger gap on one side or the other, and that might determine how you route your cable. So you can see I have the cable run here. That'll get compressed when I shut the door, and that is the place where water could potentially get in. But it's supposed to be dry right now, so this should work very well. So up here you can see where we have the wire routed. It's not pinched anywhere. If there's any doubt that this could get pinched, then you need to find a different route. But on most cars, it has gaps like this and a weather seal, so you should be able to get it from the roof to the inside of your vehicle. So now let's plug it into the power station. So this will plug into the solar input right here. Okay, and in a second here, we'll see how many watts we're pulling. So this is a 100 watt panel, but it's facing directly up, it's not aimed. So we can't expect that this will get 100 watts, but it's looking very good right now. 60, 70 watts, that's very respectable. So I'm at 99% right now. I'm going to hook up my portable refrigerator. I'm going to turn it on high, and I'll let it run with the solar running at the same time, and I'll come back in a couple hours, and we'll see where we're at on the battery. Now, this is not a scientific test. A better test would be to run it without the solar and with the solar, but the fridge takes about 50 to 60 watts intermittently, and this is pulling in around 60 watts, so the battery should be maintained by the solar panel. Now, it is cool out today. It's 50 degrees, so it's not a super hot day, but I'm going to crank the fridge all the way down into freezing mode so we can give it the heaviest load we can. Okay, so I have my Astro AI portable fridge connected up, and this was provided to me by Astro AI for a previous video. So I have this set to minus four, and it's on the max mode, and the current temperature of it is 68 degrees, supposedly. This was in a basement. So I've disconnected solar here, and it says we're drawing 36 watts, although that is climbing. So when we plug in the solar, it's showing our solar input. So we should get our, I don't know what, 50 to 70 we're getting here. 
So it's currently around 11.23 a.m. I'm going to let this run a couple hours and then we'll come back and check on it. Okay, it's an hour later. The cooler's down to zero degrees Fahrenheit and the battery is at 99% and it says output is 39 watts. It's full sunlight, so I'm guessing we're getting quite a bit of solar charging right now. Okay, so it's just after four o'clock. The cooler is around zero degrees Fahrenheit and it's pretty warm in here. It's 60 degrees or so outside but the sun has been coming in here heating up the interior. Now the battery is currently at 87% and it's drawing 33 watts. Now about a half hour, 45 minutes ago, I turned off the DC load and I was getting about seven watts in from the solar. So we're definitely not having peak solar time right now. Now I thought about leaving this overnight, but we're gonna be dip down to the freezing temperature, so I don't wanna leave it in here overnight. But if it were to cool in here overnight, even in the summertime, that puts a lot less load on the fridge, which takes less power from the battery. So then ideally the next day, the solar can recover the power used overnight. So it's hard to test exactly how this would function in actual usage. Now this is only a 300 watt hour battery. If I had a larger battery, I could run the fridge longer and then I would have more capacity to recover from the sun when the sun is out. Now if I was driving using this, I'd probably have the air conditioner on in here, which would also cool the interior so I'd have less cooling load on the fridge. So I'm going to take this for a drive and I'll give my thoughts. It may actually be tomorrow when I give my thoughts because I do want to cover installing this on something like my Subaru Outback. But I wanted to give a summary for today about the results I got and I'm very pleased with them. Okay, so I took this on a little drive and I didn't notice any noise from the panel. I'm not saying it made zero noise, but it wasn't anything I explicitly noticed. I did want to get a measurement here. If I put a ruler next to my bar here, this is kind of oval shaped. And if I get down to eye level, it seems to be about two and three quarters inches off the roof and the panel here is at about five inches and the bottom of the panel is just over three and a half. So if these were inverted, this would actually sit up pretty high. I'm pretty comfortable with the way this sits on here. It looks pretty nice and it's not sticking up super high. Now I did consider one thing is that the roof of the car is crowned and so are these crossbars. So on the driver's side of the car, it's kind of facing currently to the east. So the sun is setting in the west. So it's not at a good angle in the evening. So that could be an argument to actually put the solar panel in the middle of the roof rack. That way it's just directly straight up and down and it's at the most optimum angle for a longer portion of the day. So I'm done with this test for the day. I'm going to remove the panel. So I'll just put my hex key in here and I'll loosen it up on all four corners and I can lift it off the car. And I'll obviously unplug the cable too. So I came back here to disconnect the solar and I disconnected the fridge and it's currently pulling in 20 watts. So when I checked earlier, I think there was some shade from the tree, but now the sun's at a lower angle, so we're getting more optimum charging. Now, if I were to integrate some kind of system to tilt the panel, I could really get good charging in the morning and evening. But I like the simplicity of what I have set up here. Okay, so here I have the solar panel on this 2017 Subaru Outback. Now this has the integrated roof rack rails, and the crab mounts are set up with the holes that were in the panel when I got it. So to mount it on this car, what you would do, you'd measure from the front of one rail to the other. And then on the solar panel, you would measure from one hole to somewhere up here and mark it on here and drill in there. And you want to be pretty precise and then you would mount the mount there. Now you could even it out and drill two holes, but I think it worked just as well to use one of the default mounting locations and only drill a hole on one end. So you do that on both sides and then it would fit this rack. Now, if I want to switch between my two vehicles, it would make sense to set up the spacing for this car and then on my Land Cruiser, just adjust the bars to be the same as on my Outback because they are adjustable. But these bars are fixed. You can't move them for an aft. So these are an aerofoil shape bar. Let me just clamp this one down to see what it looks like and how it clamps against that. So it seems to be clamping against that just fine. And here's the back side. So on the front, it's touching right here. And on the back, it's touching against the edge. But that's really tight on there. So another thing to consider if you're putting it on your car, you want to check your moonroof. I already checked this one. It raises up to about here. It doesn't get in the way of this. And you also want to check your hatch. So depending on where your rails are, if they're towards the back, you want to make sure your hatch will not hit your solar panel when you have your hatch open. There are also situations where if you're in a garage, if the top of your vehicle is close to the top of the garage, you want to check that out too. You wouldn't want to mount this in a garage and then have it hit the top of the door. You'd want to pull the car out and then mount it. Now, if you're in a situation like that, a little tip I like to use is to take a chair or something and put it in the entry of your garage. So when you come back from your weekend camping trip, you'll see that chair there and it'll remind you that you have something on top of your car that will hit the top of the garage door. So that's how you can mount a solar panel on a roof rack using these Bouge RV crab solar panel mounts. I really love the versatility of these. 
If you have multiple vehicles, you can set this up so you can move your panel between multiple vehicles easily. You could build a little stand on a deck or in your backyard that you could clamp these to. So if you have a power outage, you can mount it to that. It only takes minutes to put it on the car. So if you're not using it, you can take it off for storage. The main thing to keep in mind is when you loosen this up, if you back this off too far, this bolt will come out. So you want to make sure it's threaded in at least a little bit. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.